We start with the roll. Councilman Daly? Here. Councilman Duper? Present. Councilman Pescu? Here. Mayor Pro Tempore Lenard? Here. Mayor Rigsby? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like a quorum. We have uh, first our report of closed session from our attorney. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the City Council has been in closed session on two items under conference with legal counsel, existing litigation. Uh, the matters are listed in the agenda. Uh, on each of the two items, the council received a report from uh, legal counsel, gave uh, direction. There's no final action to report at this time. Okay, thank you. Next item is our invocation and pledge of allegiance led this week by Councilman Popescu. Please stand. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity you've given us to all live in this wonderful country, this amazing state, and this beautiful city. We ask that you be with us tonight as we deliberate and may we make wise decisions to the benefit of all. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God and God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Would the public like to speak on any items not on the agenda? This is your opportunity for three minutes. Okay, no takers, so we'll move to our first item. The sheriff will be presenting a commendation to Loma Linda resident Ruben Favela. Mr. Mayor, Honorable City Council members, uh, I'm joined this evening by Captain Hector Gomez and also Deputy uh, Rachel Varela. Uh, she, she works here in the city of Loma Linda. I don't know if you guys have maybe seen her as you, as you traverse through the town. Uh, thank you this evening for allowing us for the opportunity to, to make this special presentation. Uh, recently an event occurred that uh, it kind of touches all of us uh, in law enforcement, and we just wanted to recognize a citizen and a resident of Loma Linda, Mr. Ruben Favela. Mr. Ve Favela is here this evening with his wife, Norma, his mother, Sally, and his sister, Kathy. Uh, I, think that, uh, I think that when you hear the story, I think you guys will probably join us in, in wanting to honor him here this evening. So uh, just very quickly, uh, on Saturday, uh, November 10th, 2018, in the in the morning hours, Deputy Varela and and by the way, I I know my college speech class taught me that you should never apologize, but I have to warn you. I'm going to be talking about Deputy Rachel Varela, Ruben Favela, and this incident occurred at the Valero, so it's kind of a tongue twister. I I apologize in advance if I uh, if I trip over that once or twice. In, in any event, on that Saturday morning, Deputy Varela was dispatched to a vehicle burglary. And during that vehicle burglary, she learned that the victim's credit cards were being used at area businesses here in Loma Linda. One of them was a Shell station, the other one was Valero. She went to the Shell station and she viewed video of these two suspects, a male and a female, using these credit cards. She went to the Valero to also gather that evidence to see if there was video surveillance. And as she was inside the store waiting to view the video surveillance, uh, ironically, the suspect came back in to use the credit card again. So she quickly called for help, and then she waited until the suspect and his girlfriend approached the counter. She came up behind them, identified herself, and told them that they were under arrest. When she attempted to handcuff the, the male suspect, he violently resisted and he tried to flee out of the store. There were several other people in the store. Some of them ran away when this occurred. Some of them pulled their cell phones out and started a videotape. Mr. Favela dropped the things that were in his hands and he immediately 
without any regard for his safety, came to her aid and he grabbed hold of the suspect and began fighting with him along with Deputy Varela. The fight lasted for, for probably the better part of two minutes and here in the comfort of these chambers, two minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're in a fight, I can assure you two minutes is a long time. Throughout the course of the fight, Mr. Favela tried to uh, keep a hold of this individual who, who just, I mean, he kicked and he, and he punched and he did everything he could to try to get away. And, and the entire time, Mr. Favela uh, uh, assisted our deputy. At one point, even the female suspect basically attacked him while he was lying on the ground holding, al holding on to the suspect. And he didn't blink at that point, he just continued holding on. If that weren't enough, at some point during the struggle, the suspect was able to get his hands free, and you can actually see it on video footage. He reached in with his free hand to his waistband, and he actually produced a gun, and he started to point it at Deputy Varela. Fortunately, she was able to have, just before this, brought her taser out, and I, I, by stroke of luck, that little jolt of electricity was just enough to cause him to drop the gun onto the ground. So they continued fighting with him, and as it was laying on the ground next to them, they couldn't get to it, but he reached for it several times. And, and another helpful resident actually saw this, and he picked the gun up and removed it. So this evening, it is with tremendous admiration and a profound, profound sense of gratitude that we would like to honor Mr. Favela with a commendation for bravery. Sergeant called me a couple weeks ago. I was kind of surprised because I, I really don't think I did anything that I wouldn't normally do. And uh, actually being here today, I'm really touched. This, this is going to mean a lot to me. It, it really does. Um, I didn't think I'd be as emotional right now as I am, but I, I am. This really means a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wow, that's amazing. There's so many ways that could have turned out worse. He, he really put his life on the line. That was amazing. Okay. Now for item number two, we have a public hearing determining if a project is exempt from CEQA. Good evening, Mayor Rigsby, council members, members of the public. My name is Lorena Materita, and I am the associate planner for the city of Loma Linda. And tonight, I will present the precise plan of design application 
for the architectural elevations and configuration of the new Citrus Trail community located by Mission Road and California Street within the planned community zone and special planning area D land use designation. The applicant is Lennar Homes. Their proposal includes the construction of 224 single family residences, two public park facilities, an open space paseo, two lots for water quality basins, and various other amenities on 91.7 acres. The project is associated with the previously approved track map 18990 and planning areas 26, 28, 212 through 218. In addition, it is surrounded by residences to the east and south and vacant property west and north. To give you some background, the original applications for the master plan and track map were submitted back in 2014. On September 12, 2017, this council approved the applications and adopted the Citrus Trails master plan and the environmental impact report. Since the tract approval, most of the citrus trees were removed and a developer, Lennar Homes, purchased the site. In July of 2018, Lennar submitted the required application for the designs and configuration of the proposed homes, park, and amenities. For two months, staff Excuse worked Excuse me. Yes. I, I'm sorry, can you go back to the previous of slide course. and orient me quickly? Okay, for the location? I, I, yes. Okay, so here I we have. I see the red line. Here uh, we have California. Okay. Mission. Yes. And I believe this area right here was the Citrus Lane community. And just east of it was KV Homes. And so right here outlined in red is the project site for Lennar Homes and the two parks. And, and I'll show you uh, another and site what, plan too. What is too. at the top? What, what right, street? This is the VA facility. Oh, okay. Okay. And Mission Elementary School. Okay. And I believe this is the RV park. Okay. And again, this is all vacant lots. And this, this area right here, that's all special planning area D, basically what we're calling the Groves area. Okay. Okay, so for, for two months this past summer, staff worked with the applicant to correct the plans and provide better quality elevations and park designs. In September, staff presented the project to the Historical Commission. And in November, we took the revised elevations to Planning Commission. Both groups commended the applicant for the designs and made a motion to support the ratification and approval of the Certificate of Appropriateness and PPD application. So here we have the site plan to the right, very similar to what you saw and approved in 2017, if you could remember. But now the homes are laid out and names have been issued to each new street. The lots will range from 7,200 to almost 15,000 square feet in size, with homes ranging from 1,950 to 4,122 square feet. There won't be the same style or floor plan next to each other or across the street from each other. Nor will a one story be next to a two story home. They will be placed on separate blocks. Each block will have staggered setbacks as shown to this image to the left. The lots will have large backyards from 20 to 32 feet, making it more usable possibly for a future pool. A two-car garage is the minimum requirement throughout Loma Linda, but many of these homes will have a three-car garage or at least the option. To access the community, residents can come to existing streets, like I mentioned in the previous slide, through California, Mission, Orange, or Citrus. Highlighted in green right here to the north is North Park, and right here is South Park. These aren't the designated names, but just for the presentation. These yellow boxes are the water, water quality basins, and the golden arrows represent the paseos or the trails that will connect the parks and the neighborhood. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you how far we've come with the project in terms of elevations, and then I'll get into the park details a little later. So the first official submittal was in July, 
At that time, Lennar had previously met with staff to make sure the proposal was complying with the master plan. During their first go around, they only proposed three styles with a beige color palette. It was missing features such as the required two carriage lights, some nicer window trims, wall siding, different material, and it was almost void of any architectural flair. So after the first round, staff provided the applicant corrections and suggested guidelines to follow in terms of architectural enhancements. And about a month later, Lennar came back with a whole new set of designs. With the second submittal, the applicant added additional architectural styles for a total of five styles and eight different floor plans. They included Monterey, Prairie, Mediterranean, Craftsman, and Italianate. As you can see in these images, a lot has changed since round one. The garage doors now all have windows. There are two carriage lights per home, as well as win special window trims, wall siding, such as the stone veneer and bricks. But most importantly, it's obvious now what architectural time period or style applies to each home. For example, this prairie style home, it's one story, low pitched, roof, strong horizontal lines, and ribbons of windows. The Mediterranean Revival now has a prominent ornamental wrought iron feature and curved arches, and the Italianate also has the arches and the rectangular coins. But although there was improvement during the historical commission meeting, the commissioners wanted to see more architectural features on the elevations and more color variation. So Lennar went back and incorporated the additional comments into the revised plans. The plans you have before you and what you see on the screen now is the final set that reflects all comments the applicant has received since July. Some of the major changes you will see are the vivid colors, unique roof style, different colored doors, and multiple types of materials used. Where, and we also where see where that are these- the vivid colors? Vivid colors. Well, before we I mean, had the beige- this looks- Mm -hmm. Boring to me. I'm telling okay, you. and then it could be, and I could definitely pass this around. You'll see the colors and what they're supposed to be like. Um, would you like me to pass this around? Because right here, you'll perfectly see the vivid colors, or we'll have Conrad do it. I think so, it's the so presentation in the, the PowerPoint. On the screen are not what we're talking. And about. that's that's yeah, always the case in terms of the PowerPoint. <laughs> it's variations of beige. There's greens, reds, blues, beige, whites, grays. <laughs> and different colors in the roof as well. I, I had a question about the size of the the difference between the two stories and the one story. You, you mentioned that not a two story and a one story are not gonna be next to each other? They will not, they'll be on separate blocks. And right. it'll be f for multiple reasons, for privacy. What were some of the other reasons why? Well, we also just, uh, the community uh, suite. Sorry, hi, That's Brian King with Lennar. Um, basically, we consider two separate communities, the single story and the two story. So we have separated for that reason too. Um, in the model, with model homes, there will be next to each other, but that's the only place it'll occur. Is, uh, I'll, I'll wait until they're done, because I do have some questions. Thank you. Is that something that's new with developments where all the houses on one side of the street are one story and the across the street are two stories? Um, we typically, builds like several communities inside one project and that's just the way we laid it out in this case it's not always that way because yeah. i mean i've driven through neighborhoods where one house is one story and the house next to it is two story right. i'm not sure why that would change yeah I don't know if I, my architects have any comments regarding that. No? That's just, I don't know, that's just the way we laid it out. And it, okay. to us, it's two, it's two separate communities, so we. So, so in other words, what you're going to end up having is 
30 homes on both sides of the street with all single story, and then another community with 30 homes, all two stories. Is right. that what I'm right. understanding you saying? Right. Okay. Um, and then my next question is, as you look at 200 and some total homes, what percentage are one story versus two stories? Uh, it'll be 88 single story and 136 two story. Oh, so the majority of them are still two stories. Yeah, right. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Yep, no problem. So basically, I was saying a, a lot has changed, and we went through multiple renditions of the project. And the following slide are the renderings. This is what you'd see as you walk or drive by. The applicant did provide a rendering poster board out here in front, too. And this slide gives you a closer look at the architectural features and enhancements we now see with the designs, such as the two carriage lights, all different for each time period they represent. We also see recessed windows, wood finished window box, lap siding, shed roofs, terracotta caps, wood corbels, porches with arched openings, shutters, wrought iron accents, decorative vent detail, and more. Here's an example of four elevations of the prairie design. It has window treatment on all sides, and the wooden stone siding is wrapped around all exposed areas of the home. That faint brown line, brown line right here is actually the fence line. The fence line. I didn't want you to think it was part of the painting of the side of the home. And this one shows the four sides of the Craftsman design with multiple types of wall siding, such as stucco, wood, and brick, which you see on these paired posts and wood casing walls, as well as front-facing gabled roof. Looking from left to right, you can see how the elevations have evolved. The first round Italianate didn't have the arches or the shutter or garage windows or coin signs. Same with the craftsmen. We've come a long way with many changes and renditions, renditions in order to provide what we believe is a high quality product for Loma Linda and its future residents. Now I'll move from home design to amenities and outer features of the project. This is the fence and wall detail. The fences will be vinyl, and the community perimeter wall will be split face block with decorative caps and columns. The applicant's also planning to do landscaping such as vines by the block wall. And here's the front yard typical. Per code, each home requires two street trees. However, Lennar is proposing up to three trees per home. There will be ground cover and shrubs such as dwarf bottle brush, Spanish lavender, and Orchid Rock Rose. On the preliminary landscape plan, you'll see crepe myrtle, fern pine, and flowering plum trees along the trails, medians, and park areas. In the southern park will be a fruitless olive orchard with three different varieties. It'll give the orchard feel that we previously no, new in the area. Unfortunately, due to the citrusilla disease, it's not wise to plant orange trees right now. And highlighted in yellow in these areas are the primary entryways where the neighborhood sign monumentation will be installed. These signs will not only highlight the community you're entering, but also the historical significance of the area. For example, one of the monuments will also include a cast metal sculpture of an orange crate scooter. Mm -hmm. Of course. And I'm gonna get into more details, North and South Park. So that's actually in the later slide, but this one's the Before landscape. Before you get plan. into more detail. Yes. The color, color palette goes beyond beige to dark brown. <clears throat> I see no color in here at all. I'm voting against it just based on the fact this is about as, the houses may be very appropriate for the needs of our community, but it looks about as boring as any development I've ever seen. 
And, and so in, until, there's five of us here, I'm only one. But I'm saying, you know, varying uh, shades of beige to brown doesn't work for me. And I'm not talking about the fencing, I'm not talking about the landscaping, I'm not talking about the structure of the houses, but I'm against this. This is the very thing that I ran for city council to oppose is varying shades of brown. So I'm just laying that out now before you get into the detail that you were gonna go into. Understood. Okay, thank you. Yes. We, we looked at the orange, and I don't recall if the Department of Agriculture people were here at City Council or Planning Commission. I know that they were at Historic and, and one of these groups. But um, the, the recommendation from the Department of Agriculture is that significant orange planting should not be put in because this is a quarantine zone and requires spraying, special treatment, um, and tree infestation. So what we did is we worked and we looked for trees that are relatively native species, Mediterranean type, low water, that are still evergreen and we can put into a grove type feel. Um, the, the agriculture's suggestion is, is that at some point you, you need to get a substantial piece of property that's a real grove and then becomes a marketable product, which none of our parks really are big enough to do. So while it, it, it's not what any of us wanted, it's as close as we can get to something without making the problem worse. Yeah, so it's it's an external mandate? It is not avoid? a mandate, it is a request. So in a citrus trails where all the streets are named after citrus, there's no citrus. Right. That, is, that is correct. Is in, the, in an attempt to try and work within the... Uh, I, uh, I know that's not the builder's fault. <laughs> no, 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 and, and I'm not a, I'm, I'm well, are those fruitless olive trees? Because olive trees come with a mess, too. They, they are fruitless olive trees, um, three, three different varieties. The olives are the mess. And, yes. they are, yeah. and that was why we looked at those fruitless ones specifically. And I understand, and you know, this was staff working on this and trying to work with the Department well, no, of no, 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 no. Just, just to, an, and to I'm minimize not a, that effect. I don't live on social media, but I've seen enough social media in the last few months as the development has started. Um, people that don't even live in the city as, as, as far away as other communities in our valley, up in arms over losing more and more citrus trees. Yep. And um, it, it's, you know, I'm really actually surprised the historical commission didn't, didn't kind of weigh in on this because, you know, that's, that's the history and the culture of Mission Road and we've talked about it multiple yep. times. Yep. So I just, unlike my colleague, I love, you, I love you, Ron, but I don't care about the colors. Um, but I'm, I'm, more, I'm more concerned with making sure that we're, pro you know, the promises we made to the community about keeping some of these features as we, as these groves have gone away that we try to, and I, I get it, I just, there's gotta be a way, even if, you know, there's a couple of rows of orange trees, I can't see that as, as posing a huge issue to the, to the threat of the whatever. Uh, am I but, to assume but, this cleared the uh, planning commission? Uh, cleared this actually historical commission and the as far as the tr tree issue they were actually pretty happy that there was some type of a, a reference to a grove and that we kept that component even though it wasn't citrus and yes it did clear planning commission with uh, no no changes or recommendations they're actually very happy with what they wow. saw okay
So again, the monuments will include a cast metal sculpture of an orange crate scooter, and the other will have a cast metal spudge pop. So in case you don't know what that is, I did provide some photos. The North Park, south and adjacent to Park Avenue, is 13 acres in size. What has been submitted is a conceptual design as required by the conditions of approval. This park design will eventually be reviewed by the Parks and Beautification Committee too. Within this site, the applicant is proposing to install active amenities such as pickleball courts, a volleyball court, exercise equipment stations, soccer fields, basketball, a baseball overlay, as well as a dog park. North Park will connect to the South Park via a decomposed granite trail that also wraps around the entire Citrus Trails community. You kind of see it in this light brown trail going down and up. Other amenities include an agricultural themed tot lot, picnic tables, and gazebo. The South Park will have similar amenities with a tot lot, gazebo, and picnic tables, but this one will also include the olive orchard, as previously mentioned, and a 12-foot wide Zongha trail that will preserve the existing historical bridge. Along the trail will be interpretive signage explaining the history of the area as well. At the Historical Commission meeting, the commissioners commended the applicant for this design and suggested na naming the park Zangha Park. Here are images of the amenities planned for South Park, like I mentioned, very similar to with North Park. In terms of the environmental review, the project is exempt from CEQA. The area and impacts were already analyzed and covered in the adopted EIR back in September of 2017. The mitigations and conditions adopted then will continue to apply today. Moreover, CEQA section 15182 also states that when an agency has prepared an EIR for a master plan, no other review is necessary for residential projects. To conclude, the precise plan of design request complies with the goals of the general plan and the Citrus Trails master plan. It's compatible with the existing and future uses in the area. Conditions have been placed to ensure compliance with existing mitigations and city requirements, and findings have been made to support the application. Staff believes Lennar has made every effort possible to provide a quality design product and we look forward to working with them and bringing much needed housing to the city of Loma Linda in these coming years. Staff is recommending city council take the following actions. Determine the project exempt from CEQA, ratify the certificate of appropriateness, and appro approve the precise plan of design application. That concludes my presentation. I am available for questions and the applicant and his team is as well. First question, what are the ceiling heights, first and second floors? Nine and nine. Nine and nine? Yeah. Okay. Ceiling heights, nine feet. Yeah, eight feet is just not high enough anymore, so nine feet is good enough. Yeah. Eight, 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 I apologize, eight over nine. Uh-oh. Well, on top, that's not bad on top, but downstairs has to be over eight. In, in looking through the design and, uh, of the homes, I, I thought it matches the other communities already there in place. I thought um, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, I like all the effort that was taken for for all the uh, plants and all that and the, the talk about the parks. But I, I, it's just bugging me. I'm sorry. It's just I trees. can't handle the the part about the uh, the olive trees. So I'm not sure what what other options are, but I'd like to maybe see some look into that. Instead of citrus trails, it should be labeled olive trails. Mm -hmm. It's all what, olive trees. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what, what we can do is we'll engage the Department of Agriculture to see what, what they can do as far as recommendations. 
if we can put the, if we can replace the olives with citrus or if there's a portion of it some some type of citrus and I, I don't know we've, we've worked with them up to this point but we will continue to engage them to, to try and put citrus in that area my, my question is are they worried that we're going to lose our citrus tree investment are they worried that we will provide a reservoir of infestation for the rest of the county and if that's the case then we don't have much choice but if it's just we're worried that you might lose your trees, then we'll take that risk. Uh, they, they don't care about our trees. They care that uh, this, is, this is in a quarantine area. Yeah. And so it's, it's a not, a not a large enough number of trees to warrant the appropriate treatment. And so then the treatment really isn't done on a regular schedule because it's in a park. The, tr the chemicals they use aren't as effective as they typically are in a grove. So then you can't, it requires additional treatments and there's issues with those treatments in parks as well and who's um, required to do these treatments the property owner okay what if it's in a so commons area then it would be whoever the Met landscape district or, or HOA, an HLA or whoever, whoever HOA. is responsible for that property okay so, so. Th there is there is a mechanism but that's pro that's what we'll explore with the Department of Agriculture is so some treatment mechanism that's not overly onerous and, and actually workable and, and see if there's something that, that we can do with them. So it's not insurmountable, but I think Phil's right. It's just, it's almost laughable that citrus trails with, you know, Tangelo Way and, and Orange Street and Lime Avenue <coughs> has no citrus. Uh, I'm not arguing with you. It's, we'll, we will work to try and do what we can with it, yes. Maybe, for, I mean, if, even if it's like a redesign and reducing the number of trees in like a single row or some other, so it's just a facade that's facing out, or, or I don't know. I don't know if that improves it or not. Or is it a single tree is a problem in a quarantine area? Well, if, realistically, every tree, even the ones at your home, is supposed to, if you have citrus at your home, is supposed to be treated on a regular basis um, because we are in the quarantine area. Nobody does it, and that's part of the problem. And this is a large enough number of trees that it would provide a reservoir for further infection. But um, you know, as Lorena said, both the North Park and the South Park, um, these are conceptuals at this point because they will go to the Parks and Beautification Committee, and in that process, we'll. We'll work with what we can to put as much citrus into there as we can. Because Historic wanted citrus too, but they understood the limitations that we're working under. Just, just uh, I, I think no matter where that goes in the, in the Parks Committee, I think it, it really should come here also. Just from as much as we heard from the community, especially at some of our planning meetings that we had on our piece recently over the last year or two, um, that was a very strong message that was being sent. So I, I think we need to make sure we have a hand in that, not just let that slide through. We, we can bring the park component yeah, back yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, I, if I, you I realize it's separate. And we, can, we can do that. Yeah. So if we were to make a motion to approve based on the, on the staff recommendations, it wouldn't lock us into olive trees. Say that again. If we approved the staff recommendation, it would not lock us into olive trees. Your your motion would be to approve the elevations and the lot plans in the buildings, and then bring back the parks after the Park and Beautification Committee has seen it. Well, I'm not sure the mayor is asking to make a motion. You're just no. I'm clarification. Just, I'm asking. On, yeah, and I, I can see Dr. Daly was already like, wait a second, we're not ready there yet, and I actually. Uh, I do agree with you, Dr. Daly, on some of these pictures. If I was a potential home buyer, I would not be able to buy any of these houses based on the pictures I've seen. Now, could it be that perhaps the, the, the software they use in putting together this pamphlet it doesn't really do it justice, or maybe there's another way of just showing the homes in a better light? I mean, the, the ones that I see here on, in front of us look a lot better than the ones are in the, in the folder, but I, I, that's I'm the actual material. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm talking about the picture material. themselves. Well, so. Yeah. But it didn't print the same. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I'm looking at some of these homes, and I feel like I'm going into L.A. back in the 70s. Yep. I'm sorry. I feel like yep. I'm going back in time, and yep. I'm not sure that's kind of <coughs> where we want to go. Um, that's just my initial comment. 
I do have a little bit of an issue also back to the all one story and one neighborhood all second story. I mean, I got excited about the fact that there were eight different uh, styles. I'm like, awesome, you know. If you can get every eighth home to look different, but it's not gonna be that way. It's gonna be more like every fourth home because you're all gonna be one size. So I love neighborhoods where they don't look like track homes. Each home looks individual and unique and it gives you the a sense that every person has his own style and taste. Uh, and that's why I like the idea of having one house, one story, one house, two stories, and vice versa. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of my preference, and I, I, I enjoy driving through neighborhoods that make the neighborhood look unique. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether there is an ease of building, faster building, to do it all one, sto uh, one story on one street. Um, I'm sure there's some reason for it, but obviously Dr. Lennard and his neighborhood, beautiful homes, and they're staggered. And that's, I like that neighborhood. I mean, it's a beautiful, it's one of the best neighborhoods in Loma Linda that was built in the 90s. So unless something happened in the last five years, I mean, I've been through neighborhoods in Irvine and Rancho Cucamonga, and I've seen various levels. So I'm not, that's not something that I would prefer. Um, but back to the design of the homes. Um, I'm a little perturbed that it had to go three times to the planning commission to make the improvements. It only once, went once. Twice. Well, but you said they, they came back with three revisions. So well, what did they show them? Let me explain. It so they staff. did the first official submittal. Okay, staff. to staff and then. Yes, okay. and then they came staff a revision which back. we took to historical. And then went after historical, we changed the elevation just slightly and then we took it to planning. And okay. planning had no comments. They said it was fine and good for city council. So that's what I meant by three so, times so because we okay. had three different. So I misunderstood then. So. Mm -hmm. None of the recommendations related to details of window, window coverings and some of the uh, garage doors came from the Planning Commission? It came from staff? Came from staff, correct. Okay. And then a few came from historical. And but historical. most of them came from staff. Okay. And, and colors were also addressed historical. We made some changes on okay. colors. Okay. I'm sorry, a little louder. <laughs> sorry about that. <coughs> uh, also, colors, historical commission had comments on the colors and we changed colors slightly after historical commission. So, you know, the colors came from, from the, the original master plan and then they were tweaked again um, after historical commission. So I, I apologize, we thought we were going in the right direction with colors. We're well, and, and I apologize for any bureaucratic confusion in the city of Loma Linda, but obviously there's some, uh, we've got some lines crossed here. I mean, I would like to see some in brick, some in stone, some in different colors, but but we, we modifying of variations of beige does not cut it for me. I, I mean, this is as boring a project as I've seen, and and I'm sure that the 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 style of the homes, and I'm looking right in front of me now. Uh, you know, there is a, some variety in the style of homes from single story to double story and so forth. But um, I, I cannot and I will not support what I'm looking at right now. And so if you've been getting mixed signals from the historical commission or the planning commission, I apologize for that. But, but I want a community that looks interesting, that looks unique. If I go into Pasadena, I don't see varying degrees of beige to, to white. I just don't. If I go into a lot of other communities, I don't either. And that's not what I'm looking for in terms of making our community interesting. I think you can retain the same structures, but, it, but you could make the exteriors, and as I said, graystone, brick, beige, White, what, there's, there's yellow, brick. whatever, but 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 I mean, my goodness, uh, this is not what I can sell to our community, as improving on on the culture of our city. Yeah. Again, I apologize. We we thought we were fitting within the guidelines of yeah of the and, master and, plan, and I understand master that. plan and, and of the historic commission, and and I apologize and I, and to you. But the materials you're asking for, they're all right here on the material board. 
I'm sorry? The materials you're asking for, they're shown right here on yeah, the material no, I board. See. The, the I see. brick and the stone. I see. And So I, I guess I'm I, I'm kind of lost yeah, on. Not, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all the same color. The, it's all the same color. Look at. Gray, <laughs> blue, bright. Blue, there's gray. Yeah. No, no, no. Do do you guys? I, I'm I'm just again. I'm only one vote right. on a panel of five. And, and I do apologize for mixed signals that you may be receiving from the Planning Commission, Historical Mission, et cetera. But uh, uh, this does not look like an interesting neighborhood to me. Can I, can I ask a question? Um, I, I'm assuming you want to sell homes. Right. So you probably do some market research and you probably understand what the typical buyer in today's market. Right. Our, our, our VP of, of sales approves of all these color right. So I, right. I would assume that you, you probably, probably know, again, through market research, especially being a big organization, right. that if you have an orange house or a pink house, maybe those are not the type of house that sell currently with right. today's buyer. Right. I, I'm just, I, you know, right? Yeah. We, so, yeah. I, I, and again, I, I, I totally appreciate the fact that we all have interests and styles here as, as far as individuals. Right. And a lot of that is based on, you know, our likes and dislikes. Right. What, what is going to sell in a neighborhood and what's the market for? And that's what interests me. Um, right. These, you know, I think a lot of these colors, and a lot of these styles match what is already in the area. Um, and <clears throat> I mean, it, it, it already kind of goes with some of the themes that, that, that are over there. So I, I get it, and I'm not arguing that, you know, anybody's taste is, is not right. It just, I'm, I'm assuming you want to build something you're going to be able to sell. Right. <clears throat> yeah, there's been um, knowledgeable, peop knowledgeable people involved in the, the color decision, and, and, uh, and when it's all said and done, it gets passed by our VP of sales, and if she approves it, she approves it, she doesn't, she doesn't because she knows what sells. So, so be between the master plan guidelines, historic, our architects, and then eventually our VP of sales, I mean, that this is what we came up with and this is what is believed will sell, so. Yeah, the other comment And, and you're not offending me personally, by the way, because I'm like least involved in the colors. <laughs> just to let you know. Um, it, this is kind of a separate deal apart from this, this uh, decision, but these are kind of the things that we have to think about when we, have, when we appoint people to our commissions and, and do they think along the same lines as us. And, and again, we may all disagree about this particular issue, but that's something to, to consider. And then I was just wondering how many members of the historical commission were present for the meeting and whether or not this just slid through or if there was actual discussion. Because I, I know you guys have some concerns I, that it kind of went through. Well, but I'm not sure whether the historical commission not historical. Is, I'm sorry, planning commission. Okay. Historical commission. But it sounds it like the color was, from what I understand, chosen by the historical commission, or at least they made recommendations, and you try to accommodate them. Right. Um, we have yeah, I'm not sure whether the, their roles, to to be honest with you, is dealing with colors. Uh, I don't know if they maybe dictated saying we want this neighborhood to look like the 60s and I think they got their wish because I think this neighborhood looks like where it's the 1960s. Well, and I'm not trying to dictate colors. I'm saying let's make a neighborhood interesting. Well, as opposed to, uh, you know, kind of cutouts of mirrored images of your neighbor. My, my question to you, Ron, is to me an interesting neighborhood is semi-custom or custom. Custom or semi-custom neighborhood. That's interesting. To me, a tract is not that interesting, but it's a tract. And, Does and, it have to be that way? Well, it doesn't, and we have, we have a neighborhood I that disagree. we... I disagree. But we, we had a neighborhood that we designed in Area D that is custom and has larger lots and True. has that kind of look. True. But to me, it's, from my experience in looking at these things, 
it's not very often you see five styles and eight floor plans from one builder. That's unusual. That's a lot. And that's answering Ovi's thing. Yeah, but I and I know the fact, I know you're saying that you only get four of the no, no, no. floor plans because they put all of the one stories together and all the two stories together, so there's four of each. And I understand that, but it's still, it's, it's, it, in my experience, it's unusual to have eight. And I saw the first draft you guys put forward. That was, you have never seen a more boring ah, set of houses so than that. So this is the new and improved. This is, okay. this is 10 times better, in my opinion, than their first draft. Isn't it? it I mean, yes. it's just. I I, I, I'm looking for draft. some kind of artistic creativity in this as opposed to what will sell fast. And, and I recognize you need to sell homes. I respect that. But they don't all have to be varying degrees of beige, in my view. And, and so, again, I'm only one voting member of a council of five. But I'm saying uh, if I look at the homes in front of me, there is variety. And, and I haven't, while I haven't studied the floor plans, I'm willing to concede those are probably realistic and, and have variety as well. But my goodness, if I drove through that neighborhood, I'd fall asleep. And, and, and that's one member of a city council. And I'd like to see a little bit of flair and something interesting so that you don't go to Redlands and see the same thing or Highland and see the same thing. Uh, and I recognize that, that uh, uh, you know, we have a tradition here. We're in, in um, an area, <laughs> citrus and and so adobes are part of our heritage and I, I accept that but it doesn't mean that's where we've got to live for the next century so that that's I'm only expressing my personal opinion you haven't heard from everybody on the dais and but uh, that's been one of my challenges with Southern California for a long time is I, I go to other parts of the country and I've been all over the world. And uh, you go to Bergen, uh, Norway, or you go to Ireland where it's gray skies and the way they try to brighten it up is with the colors of their homes and the flowers. And, and just because we have sunny weather, I don't think means that we have to have brown houses everywhere. So that's my personal bias. I am not an expert on this, and please don't take offense, but I'm just sharing my perspective because uh, uh, I've got a neighborhood that's gonna ask me why I voted for or against something. Yeah, just, just for a quick background, you know, this, we're working off of an approved Citrus Trails master plan. I understand. And that's where the five architectural styles come uh, from. And we may need to relook at that then. And then the colors come from the architectural styles they need Come to fit from the, well. They need to fit the architectural styles to, to stay authentic to the styles. Okay. Whether it's Italian Ed or Monterey or, or yeah. Craftsman, and so that's you know that's what we were trying to do. Okay. Are, are there any Monterey's in the two-story? No. I didn't think so because Monterey in the two-story has nice porches and things like that. Is right. that why you avoided that? Possibly, yeah. They they get quite costly to build to build a proper-looking Monterey porch. Yeah. yeah. So it starts pricing the homes out of the market. Yeah. So in the two-story neighborhoods, there are only there's, there's four architectural styles on the two-story and four on the single story. Okay. I believe. Am I right on that? Three each. Oh, three each. There's three each. Okay. Three on the two-story, three on the single story. How, how big okay. of a burden would it be on you to have brick facades or rock facades? or if we're gonna have stucco to have color in the stucco. I, I'm, because I don't wanna be unreasonable, but it's an honest question. Well, we do, we do have all that. The, the facades match the architectural style that was approved in the master plan. So no, we do I have understand. brick, we do have rock, we do have colored stucco. Yeah, no, I know, but it's all variations of brown. 
if you go to the, the prairie, that's almost all brick and stone in the front. Um, same. Kind of go same back to my the, original. The Italianate that has a lot of a lot of stone, and then the hard finished concrete for the uh, the coining. So that we're trying we're trying to get different textures. Different textures, but not different colors. At, at some. Well, there are contrasting colors in the coins. If, there are contrasting colors in the fascia, and in the fascia, and contrasting in the trim. T typically, homes are not bright, vivid colors. Um, in you know, certainly not in Southern California, not throughout the United States. Have so you been to Pasadena? We, Pasadena has and and San Marino have very our, interesting. San Marino so, is <laughs> is is an ideal, but I don't think it's practical. Well, we, well and Pasadena. We, we have worked with the builder, and he's actually brought some some brighter colors, more livelier colors too, especially for the accents, for the doors, for the trims. That's where we get the blues, the greens, those kind of. And at some point, if you're if you end up too bright, it draws you away from. The, the architectural feel of that, and now you're looking at it as a bright stripe on a building. So we're trying okay. to find that balance, and I, I understand what you're saying is maybe it's my northern European heritage. Um, you know, and personally, the, the Monterey to me is is a is a dull brown. You know, other people love it. I just don't like that style. Yeah. Yeah. But there is there is some we can do with the color, um, but we do have to remain true to that architectural okay. element. I've made my point. Thank you. You've Thank been you. very patient and excited. No problem. Well, I would encourage him to make the point and persuade the rest of us to get everyone else to make some changes to make this project better. <laughs> so having said that, I, I'm not sure whether perhaps his critique of the project and mine may be more due to the lack of detailed that you might show there, but it doesn't show in the pictures of the houses. In other words, it, I, I cannot envision that you, if someone from another state who didn't actually see the home would look at this picture and say, oh, this is my dream house. I just can't. I mean, so obviously, I think w the, the software you're using or whatever is doing the rendering doesn't do it justice. I, I've seen pictures of new homes being displayed f for sale, and they're not, haven't been built. They there clearly are a rendering of it, but it gives me a lot more detail. There's plants, there's lighting, there's a feeling of this is the home I want to buy. And I don't know whether you're hoping that what we see here is going to be widely improved, or whatever we see here is exactly what we're getting, because I, I mean, I like some of the detail there, but it's not showing up in the bigger picture. So maybe my suggestion is I'd like to take another look at this with more details, maybe get better software that gives me more detail of all these unique things that makes these home, for lack of Dr. Daly's commentary, boring, you know? Make me look at it and say, yeah, I agree, I didn't see that in the first rendering, but now that I look at it from a different perspective, so that would be my recommendation. I wouldn't necessarily disapprove of the project, but I'd, I'd like you to sell me on it because what I'm seeing is just not quite up to it. You're the largest builder in the country, right? Right. Do you have installed neighborhoods with these styles that you can show us pictures of? Because I'm on your website. Um, yeah, probably so. I mean. Some of, these, some of these architectural styles on, on these proposed homes are actually more detailed than other communities of ours, but do we, do we have others that are similar to this? But there are much, much more detailed renderings in, on your website that show, for example, more detail in the, in the four-sided architecture aspect. So your, your drawings tend to um, have minor details but there there's more details in your in your pictures on your website on the back you know the backyard um, you know there's some Monterey style that's actually installed because Chino is apparently a place where you can get higher prices um, 
Yeah, I, th I think it would be nice to get to look at some of these other renderings to see if that's what we're what we're looking at. I, you know, this is so much more detailed and better than your first draft that you know I'm blown away by. It, but it's still not doesn't look as good as the actual installations. So I, what let, let me tell you a story. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm a teacher by trade, so I, I communicate in stories. 40, 40 whatever years ago, uh, when I showed an interest in who eventually became my wife, her parents live in South Pasadena. <laughs> and uh, so she was giving me her address, and she said, you know, don't worry about the address. Just come down San Pasquale Avenue and look for the house with the green doors. And that's how I found her. And we've been married now for almost 40 years. Green doors. Uh, and, and so what I'm looking for is something that will be bold and interesting. It's not going to be attractive to anybody and everybody. But I want Loma Linda communities to be interesting. And so I, I can't make specific criticisms of the proposal that you brought before us, but it's not interesting. And, and that's what I'm looking for. We have a lot of boring communities already within Loma Linda. And so I want our future to be more interesting. Green doors or yellow doors or um, you're, you're the creative person in here, not me. I mean, I'm a statistician. I'm the least creative, but but I'd like there to be interesting communities where people go, yeah, this is a unique place. I think I want to live here. That's what I'm looking for. Well, but again, I'm only one vote. Right. Where do, thank, where do you, you stand? Because I'd like to make a motion. I just wanted to say one thing. One man's interesting is one man's yes. eyesore. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. for, for you that sure. was so turned on about it, there may have been people that drove past that every day and says, what in the world is with those green doors? So what are we going to do? Have everybody with beige houses? So no. But, but I guess it's what but the I, market drives. I think yeah. it's, it's market driven for one thing. For one thing, yeah. if I drove into a community like this and saw one house in pastel, I would say, oh, man, I, these, I'm out of here. Right? You want it because you think it's interesting, but I would look at that and go, that doesn't fit. We're not in Cape Cod. We're not in Key West. It's not right. And I mean, I just went down there and looked at it. To me, I mean, when I got close and looked at it, there's red, there's green, there's gray, there's white, there's a hint of blue. I'm not sure what's left except pastels, and I'm not prepared to say we need to put a bunch of pastels up. No, or you're talking houses. earth tones. You there's like earth tones. That's what you're saying. Well, but houses are most people don't like from the earth. garish painted houses i mean have you been to, have you been to uh, ireland i have been to ireland have you been to scotland i have been to scotland too and i've been have to japan been to, where it's even more we boring. can play this game all night if yeah you know. no I, I agree okay. every house in japan is as boring as it can get what's that so every every house in japan is boring i i, I watch a because uh, i'm all bored right. i watch a lot of like, you know, Discovery History Channel, that type of stuff. And I've been watching a lot of real estate nonsense lately. Yeah. And it seems to me that what people care about now is they could care less what the outside of their house looks like. And they spend millions of dollars building these beautiful interior living spaces. And they call all these different wazoo things and spend money on appliances that they could probably pay for college with. Um, I, but I, I, I do agree. I, I'm not a person that drives through a neighborhood looking for that type of diversity. Uh, I'm more interested in what it goes on inside my house and what it looks like inside my house where I live. Um, personally, I think this matches everything else that's in the area. I, I think it's you've, you've done good. I, I heard some things along through the process, um, which I was a little worried about. I heard about a little bit of the back and forth, but I'm, I'm glad that we got here and that staff finally supports this. Um, I will make a motion to move this project forward. Yeah, we have to have a public yeah. hearing before we can move. I know you guys are hold that. Okay. Hold Sorry. that thought. Because we're going to be here all night. So, are there any other comments or questions before I open the public hearing? Well, I'm not even sure if there's anybody's commenting unless they're going to stand up from the audience now. But 
I, I wanted to, since we're talking among ourselves right now, I wanted to see if perhaps I can get some interest in re-looking at this without having to really make any changes, but perhaps be able to, I mean, for Dr. Daly to say, I believe that the colors look boring, and then for you to describe seven or eight colors clearly tells me that what's in front of us is not indicative of what's available. So goes back to what I said before. I, I would like to see better detailed pictures that make me comfortable with the fact that it may address Dr. Daly's concern about colors and my, my concerns about architecture and the detail. And I'm just wondering, is that even, uh, am I asking too much for something, that type of a change? I have to ask my architects. <laughs> Yeah, can we, yeah, can we just do some, yeah, I believe we can put together some additional renderings, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, you, if you're going to sell this house and put right. it in the newspaper before you even build a model home, I can't envision right. you're actually going to use these pictures. I just can't. No, eventually there'll be renderings for marketing. With a little bit more, need. so maybe those renderings can provide us the detail we're looking for. It might, it might satisfy Dr. Daly and my own concerns, and I just think that if we had that in front of us, I mean, we just approved a, um, a beautiful apartment project, and by golly, I mean, the detail they gave us, we were impressing, wow, this is gonna look beautiful, and guess what? When they got built, it looked as beautiful as the pictures that they showed us. And I, I wanna be able to feel the same way about this project, but I, I just, I want that comfort level. So I'm hoping that perhaps you can give me that data that can help me make up my mind. Right. And I'm just wondering whether there's to the council would entertain the idea of just having them bring back a little bit more detail. Well, I'm, I'm looking at these other projects in Southern California, and they are very similar styles. And it would be interesting if you could, you know, maybe run through those with us and see if these are similar to that. Because yeah, you know, if they can bring those back to us and show us pictures saying, "Hey, this is what we built in another neighborhood, and this is what it looks like in real life." Maybe you've built some homes that are similar. I, I know we don't want to be the same as another neighborhood, but I'm sure another city's got to have a home. I mean, you guys are the largest builder in the United States, for Pete's sake. Never mind that your stock hasn't done so well in the last five years, but maybe a reflection of maybe we need to up the ante here in uh, some of the styles. But but we do need to ensure what Dr. Dilley talked about. A lot of us got on the council making sure that we approved communities we can all be proud of. Doesn't mean that we all have to have the same taste, you know. Not everyone, you know, someone may think something's ugly while someone may think it's amazing. But I think we can all recognize beauty when we see it and we want to be able to be proud of it. And it, it's very, like I said, it's very well possible that you have it there, it just doesn't show in what you're presenting to us, so. Where would something like that put us in far as timeline? I mean, are you actually at a point where you need to start building here? Yeah, we, soon? We're, we're trying to start on our, or complete our construction documents and submit for building safety for, for plan check. So that just, you, you know. You haven't even done any of the, the utilities installation. I mean, you're not even close to that. I'm seeing right. we're, we're still, still, we're still working so on the site. You've got to be at least three or four months from even being able to start building uh, and, framing for the... And that's how long it takes to, yeah. to finish up the plans and get them through plan check and get them sure. approved. So, so, okay, I understand. So perhaps maybe, you know, in a month and 30 days or even two weeks, I mean, you guys sh should have a plenty yeah, of resources not, to be able I mean, to put It's going to be at least a few weeks to get renderings done and, and then we got to get them back on city council. But that, uh, the mayor indicated it's possible that you may even have to, you already have it already with existing projects you've done in other areas. Well, these homes have been designed for Loma Linda, so it's not, it's not like we can just pick up something else and, and show it to you. Okay. These, these are for this community. Okay. These are like totally a little, 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 little more detailed. They're, you know, they're intended to be nice homes. So there's, it's specific to this community. But what we can do, and we'll we'll fast we'll fast track with them as much as we can, is um, work to get some some cleaner renderings and some something that's more representational of the colors on the screen. The other thing for Dr. Daly and and maybe even Dr. Lenart is that some uh, some of the details that maybe we're not seeing or or we missed 
we'll spiff that up a little bit. You, you, I know you're architect and you, and you have been very flexible and have been great about um, turning stuff around. So uh, if we can do these kind of things that will we'll make it pop a little bit more. And, and I think we, we came up with some really good ones last round. And then we can bring this back and we'll, we will expedite on our side to keep you on the timeline as much as we can. Here's where the danger is, and I'm and I'm I'm leaning, I'm, I'm I'm interested in your proposal, and I'm leaning towards. I would be willing to do that. However, here's my concern: I don't want them to hear something from one or two of us and go back and make radical changes. No, no, no. we all have to agree on it. Because I personally do not want bright, vivid colors. No, no, no. I, that's not, and I'm sorry, that's just not my taste. I don't want it to be Northern Ireland. Ireland. I don't want it to be. And I'm not even saying that they need to change the colors. Hong I'm Kong, Japan. Details no, no, I know, no, I know you're not. Um, and and I, I just don't want that. I don't think that's modern. I don't think that's what people buy. I don't, I don't think those are the types of neighborhoods. That, and that's just, and that's my personal opinion. And I'm, you know, so I, I don't want to say I'm willing to, um, to commit to a relook at this and then see something completely back here, uh, or see something that's completely different when it comes back here. Um, because I, number one, I, I understand, now, there could be some argument that you make a lot of money and that you should be grateful that you make a lot of money, because I know I'll hear that, so I'm just gonna throw it out there. But I also understand that the market drives what you do, right? You're not going to cover everything completely in rock face because that's very, very expensive. You're going to accent. You're going to do things that basically that you can get away with to throw that out there so you can still make your buck, whatever that buck is. And we live in a free market society, and you have the right to make that money. However, we know that we have a housing shortage in our city. We know people want to live here. It's a highly desirable place to live. We think that good beautiful housing will sell and uh, you build the right product, people are gonna buy it because they wanna live here in this community. We all believe that. Um, so, I, I don't know, where are you at? I would be okay with the delay if it makes my colleagues feel better, but I feel comfortable with it as it is. I would move ahead and I'd just like to thank you for what you've done, moving from what it originally looked like to now. Um, same thing like you're saying. My personal feeling is I don't like garish colors. I like things more like this. So when I look at it and I say I went through the historic commission, went through the planning commission, I went through staff, and everybody did a lot of work on it. And I don't know at this point we should let our personal feelings as to what I like be the thing to do. But I'd be willing to delay it if everybody else feel a little comfortable with that too. So that's fine. I'm I'm in the same camp except I'm not I'm not enamored of delay. I'm not sure what's going to accomplish. I can look at the Lenar website and see with 3D renderings that the same house or roughly the same house looks a lot better than it does on a flat elevation and that's always the case. Um, so if anybody wants to see it, it's you know it's right there on their website. I would agree yep. with you, but I would want to see, I wouldn't have to look at a website to make myself feel comfortable. I'd like to be able to approve something that I can see that's in front of me. So yeah. that, that would be my own. And, and my, I also agree with the other two that if we have enough votes to move forward, we probably should because we'll we'll end up chasing our tails and and that's my fear. and one thing is improved for one guy and worse for the other and we'll never arrive. So, I think if we can if if we can get public input and hear from from the public, and then if we can uh, get three votes, it, it it it's approvable today. So, let's get the public hearing. Let's get that going and then we'll decide where we need to go from there. So I'll open the public hearing with the traditional hammer. Come forward one, come forward all. Matthew Harrison, I'm a citizen of Loma Linda, and um, I, I don't want to get into the argument here. They're all friends of mine, and I want us to keep it that way. Uh, what I did want to talk about was two things. Um, Councilman Popescu was concerning, questioning the one story, two story. My only response to that is, if you live in a one story and you have two story next to you, you have no privacy for your backyard. If you want to put in a pool, whatever. It's uh, so I see some. I see some positive in having 
a group of one stories together and a group of two stories maybe across the street. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that I don't know how wide the, um, the zone is for that you were referring to, uh, Conrad, relative to uh, the citrus. But Larry Jacinto and Jacinto Farms is pa it has planted a number of citrus groves in our area in the last year. And I think it might be good to consult with them and see what they say in addition to U.S. Department of Agriculture, because they know some stuff. I mean, they've done a lot, and, uh, and, and they, are, they obviously have shown them to, that, to be very successful in that regard. I really think that this should have citrus. I, I like all, olive trees. I really like olive trees. But there was citrus that was here before. They've got citrus named streets. You've got Orange Street going into it. It would really be nice if there's some citrus. Ah. I didn't know that was the name of the project. <laughs> yeah, I think you ought to have some citrus. But if we can do it, and Jacinto could, I think he'd give you a very quick answer on that. But we can reach out to him. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Any Larsons? <laughs> we had somebody. <laughs> Come on. I'm Bernadine Irwin, and my only comment is that, especially in recent days, the views that we've had with the clear air, if you have two story and one story next to each other, then you're blocking off each other's views if you have too much variety. That's a good point. I was thinking the same thing. Anybody else? Okay. Then we'll close the public hearing. What's the pleasure of the council? I'll, I'll move it as it is. Um, although I, I do respect the comments of both of my colleagues and I believe they're well placed. Um, my fear is that we this thing's moving along, and I, and I like to see that it's moving so quickly. Um, I, I hate to put any undue strain, um, and, and not that it, we couldn't do that in, in, a, in a necessary case, but um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's presented fairly well at this point. Um, they've gone through several renditions, and I personally like it, although I'm trying to keep my personal views out. I think that's where it ultimately lands, and so that's, I'm, I'm willing to move it. I'll second and echo his comments. Just a comment before we vote. Um, if I left the impression I was pursuing garish colors, as has been described, that's not at all what I was trying to I like uh, Conrad's uh, uh, adjective of pop, so that there be some pop with the various houses. Garish was never in, uh, in, in my color scheme. Uh, thank you. Just a matter of clarification. Uh, did the motion include condition that the uh, landscape plan come back for the parks? Okay. And, and maybe give us better drawings? If it's already approved, they're not going to bring back better drawings. Because they're going to show us that it's not exactly what we're looking at? Are you afraid that the drawings are going to not be, I'm, this is as good as it gets? I'm, I'm, I, I don't mean to be, to sound judgmental, but I'm good at visualizing 3D out of a 2D rendering. So maybe... If that's the case, maybe in the future we may want to have a condition that when we see these things come in front of us, we need a little bit more detail. This wouldn't pass the staff test. If it doesn't pass the staff test, it shouldn't even get to us. Maybe we need to make that a policy decision and it may address Dr. Daly's concern that there may be some confusion about what maybe the planning commission or well, the historical is. commission adds to the level here. Because yeah. I think we're, 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 we're I, I know that there's, 
not to belabor this, and I understand your concern that we want to move forward. They worked a lot hard, and you're able to picture things that the rest of us can't. Didn't but in I didn't say you couldn't. I said I could. Well, well, you're implying that somehow you're different. I've specifically <laughs> said I don't mean to sound judgmental. But you did it anyway. So anyway, uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is but that. But intention is yeah, everything. Is that we're trying to improve the process here so we, we don't find ourselves putting people's projects, you know, delay it further, but try to improve our own process to, to ensure that maybe our concerns were unfounded if maybe we had more detail, so. What, to kind of echo that a little bit, I, I think what I'd be interested in knowing what would be the attendance at both of those meetings for both historical and planning, and if we're back to the same problem where it's just a few people that are, you know what I mean? Because that could have been it too. It may not have sparked yeah. enough discussion well, because we didn't have enough. Yeah, and I'm not sure, not to go into who said what, but I had a conversation with a planning commissioner uh, last, this, this week, and he was very proud of the fact that this project came in front of them and they, they thought they improved it with a bunch of suggestions. So maybe there's some confusion there, but they thought they're doing a great job of ensuring that the projects that go before us are improved. And maybe it wasn't, a, maybe it wasn't this particular project, obviously, because, well, I, I don't know when they looked at it. It was some time back, but he was very proud of the fact that he had added a bunch of detail to the last major housing project. Okay, so maybe he was referring to another one then. They may be talking about KB. Okay. And this that's this one, they, there was no suggestions, no. Okay. Uh, the so maybe that's what you're And there maybe they learned many. from this, this one. <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you. Yeah, my, my biggest concerns about the project are the generic concerns about, about tracked homes in general. Um, they show renderings of cars that are not manufactured to fit into the garage. It looks like my little Fiat 500 would fit there. But that's, that's just a, if I built a house, which I did, I would build a massive garage, and, which I did. But, the, but for, if I wanted a tract home, you're stuck with a, with a car where, where you can barely get out of the car because you hit the wall. You can barely get out of a car beside because you hit the other car. You can barely fit the thing in. You have to put a tennis ball hanging from the ceiling so that you can be one inch from the front wall and just clear the garage door. That, to me, is a major concern. But it's every tract has the same problem. I mean, they just undersize their garages. I don't know why. It makes no sense. But I'm not going to critique it because those are the building standards of today. I don't know what, you know, do we have to change our building code to make it big enough to actually fit a car? Well, we just have to have a council that agrees that we want better standards, that's all. <laughs> well, I think, I think, I mean, what it boils down to is some of us who can't afford to build our mansions, like you did, we live in But I would build a small house around a huge garage, is what right. I would do. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's supply and demand, and, and, and there has to be the price point and the ability yeah. to actually purchase the house. And, and that's so, why I'm not. All of that plays in. That's why I'm that, not. I, 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 please just indulge me for a second because you've said that three times already. This is, they do their job, they know what the price point is. And I remember I was fighting on that side to the guys that were up here and they were making the same argument to those houses that people absolutely hated. And they said, oh no, you gotta put them together. Nobody can afford them. You can't make a project though. There's no way a builder's going to build 1,700 square foot, uh, 7,200 square foot lot sizes. There's just no money in it. Uh, th there's no market for it. Nobody wants a yard anymore. Oh, everybody wants to walk to work and ride their bikes. And oh no, you don't even have to worry about garages and alleyways. I mean, it's just, and it, and we got the project on mission that to this day I'm still getting complaints about. So I'm I'm not always, I'm leery of the notion that the developers know the market and that's what the people are willing to buy and that's the only thing they're gonna buy. I, I think we play a role in saying this is the standards of our community and this is what we want our community to look like. So I just wanted to that's kind of point. emphasize but, that. But then it comes back to my usual comment that you don't critique the project in the birth canal, you critique it in your standards for development. 
And I, and I so, made that point earlier that maybe we do need to take it up a notch, but I still think that the changes that maybe Dr. Daly and I may suggest, we're not making them change the size of the lot or the, the way the houses are necessarily placed is not major. It's maybe minor changes or at least, oh, heck, I didn't even ask for that. All I asked for was more detail. a better picture. Yeah. To have you seen the website? I have, but I shouldn't have to look at the website. If I was at the website, I'm not approving it based on the website. I'm approving based on what's in front of me. So I, I just think that if, if you're going to spend several hundred millions of dollars, and I know it's not that high, but millions of dollars on a project, I just think that giving us 3D renderings wouldn't be too much to ask. But then at the same time, maybe the staff didn't ask you for it. Then you only complied with whatever the staff asked for. So. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? None. Okay. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No? Okay, it passes four to one. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for the improvements. And we also understand that not every um, business cycle lasts forever. So, get hopping. Okay, the consent calendar. Move it. I'll second. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Is there any item that needs discussion? Okay, uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no? Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, old business, item number 15. Committee appointments. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, after the appointments at the July 10 meeting, vacancies remained um, on the Traffic Advisory Committee. One vacancy, and that is to fill um, the unexpired ter 2020 term of uh, Mr. Art Walls, who resigned. On the Parks, Recreation, and Beautification Committee, one vacancy to fill a vacant 2021 term. Carolyn Palmieri was not reappointed in July, and the Trails Development Committee, two vacancies to fill the unexpired term, uh, 2019 term of Jeannie Weissman, and a vacant term as Douglas Zipperick declined uh, reappointment. We received a total of three applications, two interested in the Traffic Advisory Committee specifically, and one indicating interest in one or both of the vacancies on the Trails and the Parks Committees. Um, all applicants were notified of the meetings this, this evening and invited to attend, and I think all three of them are here. Okay, my first question on traffic advisory is how many members are there total when it's flush with members? How many, I'm sorry? How many members on the traffic advisory committee when it's full? The traffic. There are 10 members on that committee, four appointed at large, and six representing staff and various institutions. So if we added one extra member, there would be no change in the quorum. It's six either way. Correct. Right? So I say if we've got two applicants to the Traffic Advisory Committee who are excited, new members, put them both on. Because we have problems with quorum in Traffic Advisory. So if we've got two new people who are excited and it doesn't increase the quorum call, Go for it. I agree. So that sounds like a consensus. Let's put both of the traffic advisory people on. Okay. Okay, now next, parks, recreation, beautification. You have how many applicants? The parks, there's uh, one vacancy on the parks committee and two on the trails development. And how many applicants? One. One to each? Just one, um, Bernadette Irwin. She um, okay. is interested in either one appointment or she's willing to serve on both committees. 
Oh. And there's one vacancy on one and two on the other. That is correct. Well, Sounds like we've got a deal. Yeah. Did she serve twice on the second one? <laughs> yeah. She get two votes. You get two votes on trails. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Anybody oh, object? I think uh, you're uh, you're considering on the trails committee or. No, no, no. Well, there's two openings on trails. There are two openings on trails. You could both have it. Yeah, I know. I wish it was a flip flop because I, oh. I like the park recreation duplication, but no, that's okay. I, if I'm being a part of the traffic advisory, I'm uh, blessed to be a part of uh, contributing to it one more day. So I'm okay with that. I, I actually reconsidered thinking that two would perhaps be unwise for me at this stage. I, I would like to continue to have my application for the Parks, Recreation, and Beautification. Okay. But not trails? Correct. Okay. Would you consider trails? I would consider Okay. Well, then. Yeah. Sounds like we've, and then we've got one vacancy on trails that we need to find someone, but we can do that at our leisure. Just to. Sounds question. good? I have a question for clarification. <laughs> does trails only address the hills, or does it also address the trails through some of the, some of the, par uh, the developments. Co correct. They, they overall throughout the city. Throughout the whole and city. Sidewalk and sidewalk and Edison and Eastman Trail, yeah. the okay. San, San Tim Trail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. That takes care of that department. We need to move along before he comes back from the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The meeting schedule, item 16. By the way, was there something wrong with the website today? I was on the website trying to find this very thing, the meeting schedule, and it just wouldn't load and wouldn't load and wouldn't load. Did anybody hear anything about that? No? I had some issues initially, and then it reloaded, so. I do know the agenda packet was quite large, so it yeah, took. Yeah, I know it took a long it time. It took a little while to load. Um, the city council meeting days are set by, by ordinance and are set now for the second and fourth Tuesdays. We have been typically the last number of years um, trying to calendar all business for one meeting, typically the second Tuesday of the month, reserving the fourth Tuesday for business, for if business mm -hmm. necessitates. And these are all scheduled on second Tuesdays of each month. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Your pleasure. Looks good. Since, since we're talking about dates, and I know it's a little bit two years from now, but has uh, our next uh, citywide election change from June to March in 2020? Can we verify that? I will, I will look into it. Okay. I, don't, I don't have right. an answer. That would have a significant change on our schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the um, calendar schedule is inf information only? Okay. So unless, you, unless you want to make any changes to it. No, it looks good. Any comment? Okay, then we'll move to reports of councilmen. Okay. Coyotes. <laughs> I saw a coyote over by State of Brothers. They're getting farther and farther down into the uh, city here. I don't mm -hmm. know if anybody else has seen that, but I mean, they're just running across Barton Road heading towards State of Brothers. There must have been a sale or something. Oh, they're down by my house all the time. They're yeah. in the field, so they're... Yeah, they, they walk up and down the streets um, uh, dining on cats. Yeah, it's actually pretty sad because you see a lot of social media posts about folks that are missing cats or small dogs, and that's the mm -hmm. sad reality is it's probably the coyotes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, reports of officers. I, I got something real quick. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to thank and commend the... Uh, the fire department and the firefighters association um, this last weekend on Saturday was the uh, sheriff's department's annual gift of love program uh, for 21 years the sheriff's department has provided um, a Christmas for all the domestic violence uh, victims being women and children in all the domestic violence shelters in the county and um, it just happens to be my charity that I run it and uh, um, I gotta say this year we held it at the Mission Elementary School in Loma Linda and the fire department came out and were a big part of all of that, um, taking photos with the kids and hanging out and being part of 
uh, with the Santa arrival and all that. So um, it, it, was a, it was a great representation by the fire department, but the association brought in members that were on their days off and they really did a, a, a fine thing. So if uh, the chief officers would pass that along, uh, we officially really appreciate that. And real, real, I wanna share one story real quick. I was telling some of these guys backstage. Uh, our Santa is a deputy that works the uh, HOPE team, the homeless team. And uh, if you don't know, the HOPE team is, is basically a group of uh, four deputies. They go out and they work on resources and stuff for homeless people, try to get them either housed or get them kind of on their feet and that type of thing. Um, it's not an enforcement group, purely uh, uh, just a group to help, help people. Well, um, this particular deputy that plays our Santa Claus uh, is one of the founding members. He, that's what he does all day long. Every day he's done it for several years. He had a, a little girl who came out of one of these shelters um, as she came up to sit on his lap for her gift, she made, she whispered in his ear and said, Santa, could you please find homes for all the homeless people? And uh, he, that kind of hit him right, in, you know, hit him pretty hard because that's what he does for a living. But um, it was pretty neat. And then, you know, just the whole innocence of children was pretty cool, so. Okay, reports of officers. We have item number 17, presentation regarding an exciting street modification that we viewed at the Traffic Safety Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, now, this is, this is only conceptual. This improves traffic flow, doesn't it? Impede it. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is only conceptual. Uh, uh, I would like to hear the comment from, from a lot of people, see what, how they like it, how they don't like it, and, 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 and we go from there. That's not it right there. No, no, no. It's gonna have the big seal. <laughs> so, so I, I can't resist. Do they have these in Ireland? <laughs> I think that they do. Are they so, colorful? So, so, so this is, this is, this is Barton Road, Anderson, uh, going northbound to Mile Street, and then, and then a little turn left to Anderson to University Court. The, this is pretty much the campus area that you probably all know. And this is the new hospital that we went and, and uh, for the topping this afternoon that, that's scheduled to be open in the end of 2020. So if you drive by that f location, you notice that the pavement along Anderson looked pretty bad and Martin along here kind of looked pretty bad. So what I would like to do is, is by the time we open, or the university opened that new hospital, I would like to do a pavement rehabilitation along Anderson from, from Barton Road all the way to, to uh, Stewart Street. Because we, we completed Stewart Street, I mean at Anderson from Stewart all the way to, to the freeway a couple years ago. So that, that, that was my initial thought about to do pavement rehabilitation. And then back six years ago, we have a student intern from the School of Public Health that came to us that we hired him to help with what can we do to help improve our town. So he came up with this design all by himself with, with his computer software. I don't know what kind of software that is. It cannot be very expensive. So this is a picture of of Anderson, existing Anderson Street, right in front of this is the barber shop, looking northwest. Okay, which is pretty boring. And so he came up with something like this, with the with the trees. We used to have trees along here, but with no irrigation system, those trees are dead. And and come up with the median, landscape median along Anderson Street, with some bicycle lane, with some uh, new uh, lighting. And, and a little coffee shop in, in front. Again, this is his idea, okay? This is looking east on Anderson, pretty much the same location. This is that existing barber shop and, and uh, looking east. Look pretty boring. And then on the north side of the street, we have car parking here with no sidewalk. And, and the people who park here have to walk out of the car. Pardon me? No, it's, it's, 
they're parking there right now. So, and this is what he came up with is again landscaping along the trees along along the uh, the south side of the street, a little, little bicycle lane with the parking. I I think the idea great, but it would fit the existing curb. But I think we can do something with it. And again, landscape median with some palm trees and 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 so. Oh, this is a great one. This is the intersection at, at Anderson and Prospect. Uh, this is the B of A. And, and so he came up with some an idea of roundabout. And even though it wouldn't fit, but it's still a great idea. So, so he presented this to us about six years ago, and it's been sitting there on my desk like, boy, I wish that we have money to do something about it. And, and it's a great idea. It's, it's make the whole thing look like campus. So, and then we come up with some money, and and where the money coming from? It was the the, the remaining two million dollar bond that we budget for the intersection at Redlands and California Street. That we plan to use two million dollars. Its, it's budget at the beginning was four point six million. So we say, okay, we can use two million for for that and the remaining two million dollar will come from the uh, traffic mitigation fund well the, the project came in under the budget and about two three point nine million uh, and then we also receive a grant from uh, sbcta for 62 percent of it so we have money that i think we could use for this project so we 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 kind of sit around and and come up with some idea of what can we do to make the campus look better and, and the town look feel a little nicer, like Dr. Daly said, like something interesting. So we, we're looking at the, uh, the, the, his original idea of roundabout at Prospect and, and, and Anderson, well, that's the main entrance to the new hospital, and we don't have enough right of way. So I said, well, how about we look at, at this location, which, which is Anderson and Miles Street. Again, the only thing that we spend the money on right now is just staff time and we hire the draftsman to, to do the drafting. So what we'd like to do is, is keep the, uh, the two lane traffic going south on Anderson and the two lane traffic going northbound on, on, on Anderson. So the way this will work is, is with the arrow and the yield sign and the striping to make sure that the, the, the car that want to travel southbound and turn right, they can just turn right. Or, or this one can go right and, and, and left and, and go around. In addition to that, we require some crosswalk at all this location. And in addition to that, right now there's no sidewalk here, so what we like to do is put in a retaining wall along here so we provide sidewalk for the student that, that live in this dorm here so they can walk down the hill and instead of crossing over here they can walk along the sidewalk here and cross at university court so we're looking at well what 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 do we need to do as, as far as the right of way go well we will require additional land from the university we will we'll block off a couple of the driveway right now there's existing driveway at this parking lot to the business center and, and this parking lot right now has angle parking with some perpendicular parking along in front of the building. There's also a driveway at this location that we have to close off if we want to do the, uh, the roundabout. So we pre I present this idea to the, the master plan committee with the university to see if they like the idea and give us a right of way <laughs> to, build, to build this roundabout. And in addition to that, I also present this at our traffic advisory committee and get the feedback. The, the idea of the roundabout is to help the traffic move faster, okay? So move faster throughout intersection. But I found out, as I heard from, from different groups of people, and it's, well, this is university campus and there's a lot of pedestrians that walk along. So that's something that I need to go back and take a look at. How can we make this work? And then, so I called City of Yucaipa. City of Yucaipa already have two roundabout, and they're also proposing two more roundabout. And they said, hey, what do you do? 
in case of pedestrians. So he said that on one of them, they put in the pedestrian push button at the crosswalk. But at the same time, by doing so, you create a, a traffic control roundabout that defeat the purpose. That you, the whole idea, you want the traffic to flow, but you, you block them off with, with pedestrian push button to, to let pedestrians cross. And that remind me, and also in addition to that, right now we have crosswalk over here by Taylor Street. So we cannot really have two sidewalk, I mean crosswalk that are too close together. So we're more likely we have to close one of them or, or more likely this one. And another challenge is right now we have, because of the dorm is over here, we have a lot of students that walk across Mile Street at about this location that go to their bookstore, go to the, the, the grocery store, and, and, and so forth. So it's, again, it's kind of close to, to this crosswalk here. So that's, that's some challenge that, that I, 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 we need to do. But I'd like to hear from you with your idea of, are you okay with idea of roundabout at this location? Or no, a job is a stupid idea, hell no. And, and, and another thing is, we want to do landscaping, but I will go, I will have another slide for landscaping and, and we would like to better do an improvement to the, to the area. So let's get an input on, on the roundabout. Quick question, the, what you've shown us here, it's an entirety, it's gonna cost $2 million or a lot less than that? Less, would okay. be probably, probably. Okay, and then half, my half, second half question million. is, I, I like it just from what you've shown us so far, is there any way we can do anything similar or is it there's too much uh, constraint in space along Anderson in front of the Student Services Center? In other words, it, it feels nice to see it come all the way up to the intersection, but then it kind of dies. It would be nice to be able to continue that landscaping right oh, yes, into yes. the medical center. Yes, yes, and that will be the next slide. Right now, I want to show, I want to get some input from the idea of having roundabouts at this location. I love roundabouts, and I think it's a good idea if you can figure out what to do with the pedestrians. <laughs> that was, I want to, a surgeon talked to me about that, and he said, why can't we put a roundabout in there? I said, well, it's a good idea, but we were talking about the pedestrians, and we only figured the only thing you do is either go under or over with the pedestrians because there's a lot of traffic around there so I'm not sure what you would do there. Well one, one of the things we talked about in traffic safety is that if you have the one pedestrian anywhere on that roundabout who hits that pedestrian thing it shuts off basically the whole roundabout. I mean because anybody entering could exit or enter through that through that same place they're crossing. So if you're gonna have a pedestrian one pedestrian on one lane blocking the whole thing, why not just put up lights that say pedestrians can cross any which way they want all at the same time, get it over with, and then no pedestrians for a period of time when the roundabout functions as a roundabout, as opposed to just doing it one lane at a time, because then one pedestrian could cross this way and this way and block it twice when they could just do it once and cut across the middle. <laughs> there is. Well, it's it's not just the bridge. That it, I drive through that intersection multiple times during rush hour every day, so I've I've experienced this thing. The problem is intermittently spaced pedestrians because they have whenever they want to go they can cross and they always space themselves out perfectly to maximize blockage of traffic. And don't you have another crosswalk that's just further south there? Yeah, I mean, true. But you know, you know pedestrians, they'd rather risk their life and limb and jaywalk than, than walk half a block down to the next crosswalk. But, but to me, the problem with the pedestrians is not so much that there's so many of them. It's that they don't space themselves efficiently. They should bunch up, cross together, let the traffic flow, bunch up, cross together, let the traffic flow. And if you can accomplish that by intermittent lights, 
you get much more traffic flow than the status quo. The status quo is the worst possible thing because there's a stop sign, so you have to stop. And all the time, no matter whether there's any traffic or not, you have to stop. No matter whether there's any pedestrians or not, you have to stop. And then if there's a pedestrian, nobody gets to, to go because the pedestrians block continuously. And they don't ever go, you know, there's a half a mile of cars, let's just stop for a while and let them go. Yeah. So if we could accomplish that, and where if the flow worked like a, a roundabout half of the time, and like a complete blockage half of the time, that's better than a complete blockage all of the time, which is what the current. So another thought that, that came up when we, when, we, when, we, when we met with the different groups is what if we do a, a, a traffic signal that have a crosswalk that go like an X, you know, they have that in San Diego. And, and, and so all four direction will stop. And then so pedestrian can walk across b both direction. I mean, just go, Pooping, you know, diagonal and, 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 and yeah, and between times when that's allowed, they have to bunch up on and wait. Correct. So, so, so we just like this, but except that we will stripe it so that that there be different cr all all side crosswalk, in, including the, uh, that diagonal one. So that yeah. that that can be that can be looked at. So. I grew up in a foreign country where roundabouts were the norm. They were great. How did they deal with if pedestrians? If we can figure out the, the pedestrian issues, roundabouts are a wonderful way to go. So I would support it. Yeah, and another, another comment that I heard is because the people that come from, to the hospital come from out of town yeah. and they're not familiar with the area, so are they, are they going to get confused with the roundabout? And, and, and that's, that's another good. Now, I, I have a question, though, also. In, in the previous slides, you showed uh, landscaping in a center divide. Yes. Is coming. that part of the plan? Yes. Okay. That's coming. Okay. Okay. So, so what we did is we, I guess, a landscape architect that came out with three different designs. I know this kind of small, but, but uh, so we kind of pick one and, and combination of one. So what we're going to do is, is, uh, like Houseman Popescu, this is this is B of A, and and so we can start landscaping from from Prospect up all the way to Mile Street and go north on on Anderson. Since since Prospect is an, an entrance to the new hospital, University have their own landscaping plan for the hospital entrance and and and, and the driveway into the hospital. So that that's being take care, being taken care of. The area to the west of Anderson, right here across the B of A, University have a plan to, there's not a lot of space from the curb to in the sidewalk to the building, so we, we cannot do much with, with that little space, except eventually one day they will tear all this down from Taylor Street and, and, and do something different. Okay, so if I understand you, there's the potential for a median here uh, on Anderson, right there. Correct. But when we get to Anderson going north and south, uh, there's not enough room. Is that what so, you're saying? So what we what we're proposing, this area right here where the parking lot is, yeah, we're gonna put in a they call it green fence. Is it's a four foot high fence okay. that you plant vine underneath so they can plant along, grow along here. So this would be between behind sidewalk and, and the parking on both sides. And then that would enable us to put a median in? The, the median is only right here. Yeah, but that's a mini median. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm saying, will it run down to Barton? No, because we have too many driveway. We have too many driveway and too many street. I, we thought about that putting, extend the, uh, the median all the way to down here. Uh huh. We have, we have the Taylor Street right here. We have yeah. a driveway to the uh, to the to the uh, bookstore, to the bank right here, and another one down here to the Prospect. So it's not enough room for to put a median with a left turn pocket and, and and for the car to come out. So that's why that's why we're looking only at a little little one. So are we saying it's not possible, or well, unless, there are unless options we just haven't. And this option is, is we have to close some, some driveway and, and close some street. 
Okay, why not? I, they're still using this street. What's that? They're still using this Taylor Street. <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah, so, but it doesn't get used that much. <laughs> well, actually, the, the, the shuttle stop goes down there because it's a one way. So yeah. it goes around in front of the hospital. So, I mean, there is traffic that flows there quite often. Okay. It's not heavy flow, but, and it's a one way street. And there are people in the, um, the uh, dental clinic there? There's a research place there. There's a research place. There's no dental clinic there on the corner anymore. But then there's the quality improvement department. There's the research affairs department. There's yeah, yeah. There's that, a that, that, those aren't there's a those aren't occupied heavy by traffic. There's a um, real estate yeah. uh, um, office. That's a, university real estate. Yeah. yeah, but it does. It's not owned by the university. It's called quote university, but it's not owned by the university, right? No, I'm, um, University Real Estate is on the corner of Anderson and Taylor. That's what this is. Yeah. This is Anderson and Taylor. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm get, just, yes, I'm just yes. thinking outside of the yes, box. Yes, yes, so, so this is why I'm thinking about we doing. We want to hold up a whole project. Yes, yes, this, so this is what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about doing. Oh, by the way, so, so as far as this landscape medium go, we like to put it, this, in the middle, it can be t trees or it can be sculpture. Yeah. Uh, um, along here, you can, we can think about putting the, in addition to media, we put up street light, similar to, uh, to Barton Road with two, two lights, but each one, and with some pot and plant and, and trees that are on the ground, in the ground, and along here. So, yeah. so this is not quite a 3D, but eh, close. So this is what it can look like. Uh, uh, this is looking northbound. Uh, this is the dorm. This is Hill, Hill Street, Mile Street is right here. So this is what it can look like uh, uh, with including landscaping for the roundabout. And it has brick. Yes, and the reason, the reason we look at brick is because a business center right here, there's a brick right here. Mm -hmm. And the amphitheater, at this location have break. So if you come southbound on Anderson, first you will see by, 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 by Mile Street, no, by Stewart Street, there's a dorm that have break. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, so that's a break. So, so we're looking at, well, maybe the median, we can have a little brick planter that we can plant some trees with some pot and some brick paver right here with, with the, tree great and planting trees along here. And, and so before we, before we uh, pave the street, we can put in the, the new wall line and all the laterals and irrigation to irrigate those trees. And this is what the, um, the green fence look like. So it's a, it's a four foot high fence that they plant trees in front. Okay? Yeah. So what we can do is Okay. Didn't we see a project one oh, time oh. not long ago, Conrad, where they were going to improve the faces of those buildings along Anderson Street? They, they did some work already. Um, uh, they had some screening in front of the windows. They cleaned up and they updated, they cleaned the brick and updated okay. some of the metal work. Stop. So okay. Been some work this is, this is a, a 3D video. <laughs> Ignore the hill. <laughs> okay, it's 3D. Well, you can do it, but Lennar with million dollar budget can do it. So, so, so ignore the hill, but this is, this could be Mile, Mile Street, and you can go around the uh, crosswalk right here. And this is to, uh, it's a hill drive, I think it's hill drive. And then we can put in the, uh, oh, something's stuck. We can put in the retaining wall along here with the sidewalk here. Can it go a little bit more and stop right there? Will the use of the materials for the crosswalks, crosswalks perhaps call out, we want you to cross back here? Yes. More than the medium? It seems like that would draw people to cross more where we want them to. So, so what we can do is we can make it in two phases 
and, and, and do a, a streetscape, the median first, and, uh, and uh, we can come back and think about roundabout later, but, but, but at least, I, 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 I like you, I like to have yeah. the town look nice. And with the yeah, I agree. Flower and, and so yes, I'm going to ask you a question that you would expect from me. Maintain maintenance. I, there you go. What, what, what Thank we, you. It's, Who's going to maintain the landscape? So, so it's something that that uh, Gerhard and I need to need to sit down. I don't see Gerhard. Yeah, but but uh, <laughs> part of it have to be the city, and part of maybe maybe the one on campus. Like, and, and, and yes, I'm more concerned about all of the, the new park, the so South Park, and the North part Park. Part of it is university. Part of it is city. Nobody's well, going to do it. More likely, then we just bite the bullet in the city do it. So. Okay, but as long as that's clear, that, yes. that's that's the important thing. Because to I, I have control over the city, but not the university. I know. So, so if I, 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 it's just two, three, four Ooh. foot weeds uh, doesn't cut it for me. But but I like the pictures. So if you like the idea, and I can perceive it at least doing the landscape portion, the medians, and and, and you've got my vote. As long as we have the landscaping maintenance clear. Those mountains, uh, how, where are you going to get those from? <laughs> <laughs> well, those are a little more complicated to get the. <laughs> can, can you go back to this slide, please? Okay, good, thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, 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 Here, here, here. Only if you can tell me what business is right here for many years in Orlando. That's a parking lot. Service station. Service station. Yeah. Yeah. Atlantic Ridgefield. Atlantic Ridgefield. So I just found some old Super 8 movies of my dad. It's now called ARCO. And the judge old charts and the city council chambers were right behind the station. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's the, right. the one with the motel was behind Right there. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So what I would like to do is, is at least moving forward with, with forget, forget about roundabout right now, maybe, maybe the medians and. and Yes, yes. Because look at it. Look, look. Why, why so forget about the roundabout? What, 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 look at this. But don't forget about the roundabout. We go to the landscape and we're working on the roundabout. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I agree. The roundabout is, is a great idea. And is there any way to do a roundabout at Stewart and Anderson? I'm thinking Anderson and Urban Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought that at the bottom of the bridge, Seems like that would be the interest level, on the, but I just don't know if there's enough space there yes. and whether traffic flow would be impeded. That's, you know, from a traffic well, flow perspective. The other thing with that, and I don't know how this impacts, that's a direct right of, uh, route to the ER. Correct, and that's why that has to be taken into account. So know, yeah. Although that may change. No, it'll still go it's that changing, way with the new hospital? Yeah. The ambulances, or is that gonna, are they gonna go up to Anderson? They, they I know, so. So th they're going to come up. The ambulance services. The, yeah, the they're, new, still gonna, they're still going to use The new path will be up Anderson all the way. Yeah. So, okay. so what are we, uh, what, what action are you looking for tonight? No, sir, I just want to get some feedback from you. And, and, and now I, I, I heard that you like the idea of doing this. I will. Yeah. I might get the mid year, at mid -year, my at, vote. At mid -year budget. I might ask you some money to, to hire and some Jim landscape. Larson will take care of all the landscaping. No? Oh. <laughs> so I, I will. And I, I would like to get this done <clears throat> before the, the hospital is open. So I have yeah. to work with them on make sure that I, I don't do it the same time they, they deliver big equipment or, or not it done with the and steel. Is the university on board with this?
main concern they had was ambulance routes, that the roundabout didn't impede traffic. So yeah. they were just saying, if you're to move forward, um, they'd want more of a traffic study to see how that may impact. And then there That's was fair. The Okay. Yeah, the new the new ambulance route will not go down Stewart. It'll go up Anderson because because the ambulance entrance is on Barton and you can only get there from the yeah, west. Right. Correct. You can't get there from right. the east yeah. or uh, the other way around. No, the other way around. The other way around. The other way around. Yeah. You can only get there from the east, not from the west. So I grew up on the north side of town <laughs> and I live on the south side of town now, so my head is always backwards. Always back. But, but again, my issue, Jarb, is to be sure that we have a clear agreement between the university and the city regarding landscaping. Because uh, um, if it's maintained, it'll be really nice. Yes. If it's not maintained, yes. it's going to be an eyesore. And, and I don't know who should handle what. I don't have a, a, you know, I don't have a well, vote on that as long as it's handled. Right, right now, for example, if, if we decide to go with this one, yeah, the city will maintain the median because it's in the public right of way. Okay. Anything past, I have to check the right of way. For example, if the city right of way and at the curb, then all this is belong to the university, and, and, and so. Okay, so, so I'm just assuming. Just like the planter over here, it's main. So I'm assuming if 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 it's city it's that painter. handles the median, we would be handling the, the roundabout as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. One of the problems with medians when you've got emergency vehicles traveling on that road is they always want to pass traffic on the left, and if there's a median, they can't do that. Right. So we we want to make sure that that's not an issue. What, what is the, what, so, in other words, if you model it, that's why we do a two lane. So they, they, yeah. But if both lanes are plugged, so what? The main thing I would want to model there is during rush hour, the traffic flowing nicely through the roundabout in a right turn, but then getting stuck at the light <laughs> at Prospect. Oh and then backing up through the roundabout and making emergency vehicle access impossible. This, this roundabout is a roll curve, so it can drive over them. I understand that, but <laughs> I'm saying if you have both lanes, if you have the, la the traffic, if your modeling shows that the traffic flows will back up the traffic all the way from Prospect through the roundabout and blocking both lanes approaching the roundabout, then there would be no emergency vehicle access, and that would be a problem. But yes. I don't think there will be that much traffic, but I don't know. You have to model it, right? I don't know. We didn't know how to model the roundabout, but I, I will well, check. You've got to learn real fast. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a great idea. It's a yeah. great idea. Thank you. And it's great that there's money. And, and I just want to remind everybody the trail of this money. This money was sold in a bond for the RDA probably 10 years ago. It was intended to be spent on the Stewart Street underpass. That didn't happen. So it was then converted from RDA money into some other, some other fund, and it got lost in the elimination of the RDA, and then we recouped it, and then we were going to spend it on California Street at Redlands Boulevard, and Sandbag rescued us, so the money then became available for this, and if we find grant funding for this, then it'll be available for something else. This is like a hopping money. That, yeah, but this, this money is just going all over town and it's never being spent, and that's wonderful. <laughs> it's like seed money, so it it's, it's always grows another crop for the next year. Okay, so is that it for reports of officers? We have uh, an update here on the Parade of Lights. Do you want to make a comment on that, or is the? Yeah, it's uh, December 15th through 17th, as uh, outlines the different neighborhoods that it'll be in on, on which night. I think the information's available on the city website. Uh, for the slide there, the northeast portion on the 15th, the north, northwest portion on the 16th, and uh, the south side on the 17th. 
I guess the important thing to remember there is uh, we try not to uh, hand things out or, or, or engage too much on the main streets. So uh, stick in, in your neighborhoods. You'll, you'll see more activity from Santa Claus when we actually get off the main thoroughfares more into the housing itself. So anyway, look for Santa Claus in your neighborhood on those dates. Okay, thank you. Um, and we're adjourning to a special session one week from tonight. And can you explain, is there someone who can explain what, what's on the agenda for a week from now? The audit. The audit. Okay. Just the audit. Just the audit. Single purpose. Pardon? Oh, that, the, the, the audit and then the Housing Authority also has the audit and then the annual housing report on the Housing Authority agenda. Yeah, and the reason it's one week from now is because our regularly scheduled meeting is on Christmas Day. Correct, correct. Which we don't want to do. Okay. Not particularly. So, so we can have a no, meeting on the December 16th, yeah. 18th. Yeah, we yeah we just talked about that, to avoid Christmas. Yes. So can everybody be here a week from tonight? Yeah. Yeah, that's the next meeting. It's just for the audit. Should be a short meeting, but we've said that before. <laughs> okay, then we'll adjourn to that date. And we have two more agendas to get through. We have the Housing Authority. Are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Any comments from the public on items not on the agenda? Hearing none, the consent calendar. I'll move it. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. Is there any opposition? Hearing none. It's approved unanimously. Any chair member reports? Hearing none. Any reports of officers? Hearing none. We're adjourned. <laughs> the next meeting is the successor agency. Are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Uh, any comments from the public on items not on the agenda? Hearing none. The consent calendar. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Any opposition? Hearing none. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Yes, yes. 7 o'clock.